yell at me when you're ready. All right, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And welcome to uh, Bible class number three. For those of you who are viewing, we welcome you. Um, we are in Acts chapter 2, if you would turn, please, to verse 42 of the second chapter of Acts. And today we got uh, quite a bit to go through. So let us begin with the hymn. And for those who are under the age of... Never mind. Let's read it together, shall we please, everybody? Lord God, to you we all give praise. To you with joy our thanks we raise. For angel multitudes that shine in your great throne room crystalline. That's sort of odd, isn't it? From then flow light and heavenly grace, reflecting splendors of your face. He know it well. And let us pray together the prayer at the bottom. All right, everybody join me at the bottom. Okay, are we there? Let's pray together. All right. Lord Jesus, you are the only way to the Father. Thank you for finding me and setting me upon your path. When I stumble, when I stray, when I'm scared, forgive me and take away my fear. Link me with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Forge us into one strong body, fearless, speaking for you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, we'll uh, come back to the questions a little later. So you should open your Bibles, please, if you would, to Acts chapter Two. Remember last week was the Pentecost event, remember that? And we ended with uh, Peter's sermon. We're going to have another sermon today. So let me begin with verse 42, the fellowship of believers. Let me read. So they, that is all the disciples and everyone, devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. Many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people, and the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. All right. So if you have your sheets out, let me just have you write. Notice something about this. This is the Fellowship of Believers, okay? That's the title of this. And notice the four things that characterize their life together. What were the four things? Teaching. Breaking, uh, fell, well, you forget the fellowship, breaking bread. What is that a reference to? Yeah, many would say it is a reference to Holy Communion. It could also be a reference simply to fellowship and other kinds of meals. Yes, a meal together. Uh, we're not exactly sure. And then number four was their prayer, okay? So this was part of their routine, spend, uh, learning the teachings of the apostles. And by the way, that's where the, the word there is didache. Anybody ever heard the word didache? Didache is the Greek word for teaching. And it was an early church document that goes back, I think, to the first or second century. Anybody ever hear of the didache? All right, and it has very practical, I should have brought it out today, I didn't think about that, had very practical teachings for the early Christian church. It's one of the earliest documents we have from early Christianity, okay? All right, now the other thing I wanted to mention in this, what do you notice that there were not? What do you notice that is not there, or not not? descriptive of the early believers. They didn't live their lives away from one another. They, probably, they didn't live together, but some of them may have. 
but they were not away from one another. And I have a note here that says there were, there were to be no Lone Ranger believers. You ever met a Lone Ranger believer? Who says, yeah, I'm a Christian, I don't, need, I don't need to be around any others. We had a guy in our, who, uh, he, in fact, I can't remember his name, but he was here years ago. And finally I said to him, you know, you're a Lone Ranger Christian, that's not good for you. After I told him that, guess what? No, he started coming to church. But you know, think about that. And in our day, to, in our world today, um, by the way, I'm doing a study on the younger generations, and I'm finding things out that are, I don't understand that generation at all. So I'm finding things out. But think about that. Removing yourself from brothers and sisters in Christ on a long-term level. You are robbing yourselves of what? You're robbing yourselves of everything. The apostles' teaching, fellowship, the breaking of bread, the, or the supper, and prayer. I mean, you know as well as I that if, if left to ourselves, we're just going to drop the things of God. Correct? All right? And the, and the one thing going on these days is um, apostolic teaching and the scriptures and understanding the things of God. That is being forgotten. Yeah. I was going to say, the Lone Ranger had Tonto. Yes, that's true. He had Tonto. And he, and he also had Bullet. Didn't he have Bullet, the dog? And what was the no, horse? Oh, that was Roy Rogers. I'm sorry. See, I'm so much younger than the rest of you. I don't remember that. Uh, anyway, um, let's go on here. And notice, notice also they had everything in common. They even sold their possessions to help one another out. That's always a good thing. Every day they met together in the temple courts, broke bread where? In their homes. So they were probably not meeting in a church building. They were meeting in homes or maybe at the temple or in other places in small groups, okay? And notice the description of them in verse 46 with, isn't that interesting? Glad and sincere. sincere. What is a sincere heart? Somebody explain that to me. What is a sincere heart? I have a word down here, but I want to hear what you have to say. When you think of a, one who has a sincere heart, what caring? Truth, telling the truth, yeah, not 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 double, yeah, not not good side. What, yeah? Yeah, he's a generous heart. Generous heart. Wow, I have a term here that says simplic simplistic heart. Isn't it? it well, a, a simplistic person is someone who isn't finagling. You know, what you see is what you get, right? Even if it's all the, all the warts and symbols, you know the person, correct? Huh? No scheming. Yeah, that's a good word. But as glad and sincere heart, we should all have that, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. So the folks around them saw them in a good light. And then, you, of course, you have the last verse, which is significant, the Lord, what? Added to their number, okay? So there you, verse 47 is sort of an update on the early church. Let's move on. Now, I love this part. I had forgotten about chapter 3 and 4. One day, Peter and John were going up the temple to pray at 3 in the afternoon. A man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. There he was put every day to beg for those going in to the temple courts. Uh, this is kind of like the guy on the side of the road at In-N-Out. Have you met him? Have you met him? He's there almost every day. I think he does quite well, by the way. Uh, anyway, he should bring his children out there with him, though. That would be good. Uh, where are we? When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him his attention, expecting what? To get something. 
Peter said, silver and gold I don't have, but what I do have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And so he took him. Notice he takes him up by the right hand, helps him stand up. The man's feet and ankles become strong. And he starts what? Jumping around, <laughs> jumping around. <laughs> Began to walk. Must have been quite a sight. He went with them, and he went with them. I'd have gone with them too, probably, right? He went with them into the temple courts, walking, jumping, and praising God. This was quite the sight. And when the people saw him, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit and beg at the temple gate every day, called Beautiful. And everybody was filled with an amazement at what happened. Must have been quite the sight, huh? They knew old Barney sitting there. He's been sitting there for years. His family would bring him. By the way, we have up other episodes in the Gospels, don't we, where this happened in Jesus' ministry, yeah. And it was, must have been an amazing thing. Imagine that. You think you could keep the guy from dancing and shouting and yelling? No, I don't think so. All right, so now Peter and the others, they use this as an opportunity, Peter and John. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished. They came running in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Smart Peter, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us? As if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. Now, notice, this, notice that acclamation, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? Everybody understood what that was. There's a name for that, and I can't remember. All right? Now notice, now notice the accusatorial circle the U's. You handed him over to be killed. You disowned him before Pilate, though he decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One. Ask a murderer be released. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. Notice the you. So who's he talking to? He's talking to the folks of Jerusalem. He's not talking to the, the, the folks of Pentecost. They came from all around the Mediterranean world. So the crowd today is the people of Jerusalem who are coming on an afternoon, which was three o'clock in the afternoon, was a time for prayer. So the folks in the city and nearby, they would travel to the temple for prayer. So he's talking to the people who were there on what day? Good, no, not Pentecost. Good Friday. Yeah, these are the folks who shouted... Crucify him, crucify him. Notice that. You handed him over to be killed. You be, and Pilate wanted to let him go. Remember this? This is the story of the passion of our Lord. The holy and righteous one. And you asked for who? Barabbas to be released. Right? We know that, that, that account. A murderer. And you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses by faith, this. Let me go on. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man you see and know was made strong. It's Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him complete healing. Now, one of the great discussions is whose faith is he talking about? Nah, I don't know. I don't know if it is the man's. It probably, it could be, but it probably is a reference to the faith of the apostles, I would think, okay? Any footnotes in your Bibles on that? Not sure, it's an unanswered question. All right? Uh, so you all can see, verse 17. Yes, who? Well, now, brother. Have have some yeah, of course. When yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he had to have some faith. Okay, it's worth a shot. All right, now, brothers, you know, just in case there's a God, I'll believe a little bit. 
Let me go on. Now, brothers, I know. Notice this. You acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. This is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the... Notice the prophets, yes. Notice the... the by the way, we're going to talk about apostolic preaching. Repent. Turn to God so your sins are wiped out. Times of refreshing may come that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the days come, the time comes for God to restore everything he has promised long ago through his prophets. For Moses said, this is from Deuteronomy 18, very, one of the most quoted verses from the Old Testament. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen will be completely cut off from his people. Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many have spoken, have foretold these days. You are heirs of the prophets and the covenant of God made with your fathers. He again said to Abraham, through your offspring all people on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. Okay, let's go on. So we have the wicked, the man, leaping, and he shouts for joy. Uh, apostolic preaching. This was our topic last week. I want to reaffirm this. Anybody remember what were the four parts of apostolic preaching in the early church? Number one was, this is the age of fulfillment. Did you notice that? It's in here. These, the prophets is being fulfilled in the life of Jesus. That's number one. All right? Uh, we talked about who is this crowd, correct? These are the people of Jerusalem, not the pilgrims. These are the people that shouted, um, crucify him. The second one is, Apostolic preaching always included what about Jesus? His death and resurrection. Always that, okay? Because the resurrection, people, is everything. If he died and didn't rise from the dead, he would have just been a poor, poor guy who got beat up and brutally killed by the Romans, all right? So death and resurrection. The third is, anybody want to know what the third is? Verse 19. What's the third in verse 19? Repent and come to God. Turn to God. Remember, repentance and faith. Okay? Repent and believe. By the way, that's not a popular thing today. Do you know that? Yeah. Repentance. We're living in a world where very no one wants to say, I'm sorry. I've done wrong. Yeah. You know, I don't want to go on a long discussion on this, but we're living in a time, and even, we're, I have to tell you, I'm learning some things. Yes, you should, if you know, those of you who have grandchildren or 20-some-year-olds or even younger, ask them questions like, is it wrong to lie, cheat, and steal? See what kind of answer you get. What about saying, what about saying I'm sorry? You know, and what does repentance mean? You should ask those questions. Those are things that are seemingly are being lost in the new, in our new world. Okay? Unless they catch you. Or unless they hurt somebody. Oh, yes, unless they hurt somebody. But on, it, it's, it's not wrong unless you get caught. Right. Right. Well, now maybe, you know, maybe it is okay. And the interesting thing is, once you follow that reasoning, then you can do whatever you want as long as it's for what you think is good. Amen. Correct? So think about that. And adults, and when you become adults now, as long as I get what I want, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. As long as I get, yes. It's like when that man was falling in love after showing up with his girlfriend. His parents know where, they, where he is, but he's too tired to come back. Oh, the kid who, yes, yeah, they. The man that killed his girlfriend. Has he, okay, he's not dead, right? He's living. Oh. Yeah. yeah. All right, so the call to repentance, what's the, what's the third one? Anybody? 
The fourth one. The fourth one is he's the citation of Old Testament passages. Apostolic. Yeah, the use of the Old Testament. Very, because the Jews knew their Old Testament, right? Now today, that's not so important for us because most, many in the Christian church are not Jewish but Gentile. But in Israel, if you go to a Jewish, um, um, well, no. No. If you go to, what are they? A messianic, thank you, a messianic church. They, and if anybody watched the Jewish Jesus on TV? You watch it once in a while? It always, they always go back to the Old Testament and the fulfillment of the Old Testament. And if you go to a messianic church, thank you, they will use the Old Testament a lot. All right. Yeah, by the way, where is that passage at the end um, uh, that God said to Abraham, through your offspring all peoples on earth will be blessed? Anybody remember that is, where that is? Genesis 12, verses 1 through th 1 and 3. Through you, all the nations. Think about that. That's the universal gospel. Through you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All right, we're moving on. I'm going to read. I love this chapter 4. We're only going on to verse 31. I love this. Notice the drama in chapter 44, or chapter 4, okay? Notice the drama. Everybody there? Is she there? All right, let me read. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. Now they were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming Jesus and the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John because it was evening. They put them in jail until the next day, but many who heard the message believed the number of men grew to about 5,000. So what do we learn from this about the temple guard and the priests? No, well, no, what do we learn from this? They knew, no, they knew what they were preaching about, right? They understood this. They understood about Jesus, and they knew the history of what happened, what, 50 days? Uh, when did Pentecost come? Yeah, 50 days. Just a couple of months ago, they knew, they know all about Jesus. And now they know what are the apostles doing? What is the, what is the center of their preaching? That Jesus is risen from the dead. Now as we go through this, all that the Jewish leaders had to do was what? And when I say it, you'll know it. All the Jewish leaders had to do to fight and squelch this whole thing was go to the grave, pull out the body of Jesus, and show him that he was dead, and it would have all been over. But they knew what? They couldn't find the body. They knew the grave was empty. So part of their argument, they couldn't find the body. If they did, they had the body, they'd pull it out, right? Here he is. Look at him. He's got the marks and everything. This is the, he's got the spear side, everything. Okay? But they couldn't do that. So, the, hang on, the argument was, oh, there were four, at least four, maybe more, they, they stole the body, yes. Or he wasn't, well, he was, he, he was, yes, the other one was, uh, was the wrong grave. It was the wrong grave, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What? Right, yeah, that's in the, at the end of Matthew. Yeah, so that was their opening argument. And then there were a couple of other arguments. Oh, he wasn't really dead. That was another argument. That he was that they he awakened, he clawed himself out, 
By the way, there are five or six arguments against the resurrection that came about over time. Okay? Yeah, the, one, the other one was the twin brother. Remember that one? No, seriously, that was his twin brother. All right. So, let me go through this, okay? We're moving on. Uh, so, verse, where am I? Verse 3. So that what they do, they seized Peter and John, and they threw them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. There's another update. The next day, the rulers, elders, teachers of the law met in Jerusalem, and so the whole San, a lot of the Sanhedrin was together. This, I don't know if this was an official meeting, but they were meeting. Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and other men of the family. So anybody got any footnotes on these four guys? Who was Annas? He was the senior ex-high priest. He was the, the one, by the way, Jesus went to him. Remember that? Okay. And then he went, and Caiaphas was his son-in-law, and his son-in-law, and he was the reigning high priest at the time. So Jesus went to, before Caiaphas. He stood before Annas. Remember that? And who wanted Jesus to perform a miracle? Was that Annas? I think that was. He wanted him to perform a miracle. So these guys knew Ju Jesus was, okay? So there's Caiaphas, the son-in-law, then John, or Jonathan. He was the, another son of Annas. He succeeded his brother-in-law Caiaphas in 36 AD as high priest, okay? So this was the high priest. These were the, the high Jewish leaders. These weren't Curly, Larry, and Moe, these were the high Jew, and then Alexander, we're not sure about him. All right? Okay? So, let's go through this. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question. Now, by what power or what name did you do this miracle? And they also knew what? They knew, well, they knew the answer, but they knew the miracle. Okay, they had they know, seen it. Then Peter, notice again, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. That's a characteristic of the Holy Spirit. Rulers and elders of the people, if you are being called, if we are being called to account today to an act of kindness shown to this criminal, and we are asked how he is healed, how he was healed, then know this: you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom look at this, you crucified. <laughs> but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Ah, you crucified, you, and they knew it. You st the stone you builders rejected, which was the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there's no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That's a famous passage, okay? No other name. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. They took note that these men had been... So they also knew them. They knew Peter. Okay? All right? Uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, unschooled. They were not what? They were not... They were not Jewish scholars. They were not rabbinic. They weren't rabbis. They weren't rabbinic uh, folks. Okay, they were common, ordinary people. Okay, and they were and they were from where? Galilee. Nothing good. And you know, yeah. Okay, uh, where are we? But since verse fourteen, but since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them. Now that's interesting. We learned that the guy was with them. There was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin. They conferred together. So now they get together. And the question is, what are we going to do with these men? Everybody living in Jerusalem knows what they have done, an outstanding miracle. And we can't deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further, we must warn these, men, warn these men to no longer speak to anyone in this name. Well, 
Let's think about that. So let's look at this whole thing from the Jewish perspective. Why would Caiaphas, Annas, John, and Alexander, and the other members of the Sanhedrin, remember, who else was members of the Sanhedrin? And? And Joseph of Arimathea. I wonder whether they were there that day. Okay? So, you know, I, no, they're not mentioned, but they could have been a part of this, maybe. Um, what kept the Jewish leadership from accepting the reality of the resurrection and Jesus Christ as the Messiah? The loss of power. They didn't want to lose their power. Okay. Anything else? I think that's a, that's a, uh, anything else? Maybe what? Which means? I think, well, see, you say power. I think, I think, I'm going to assume that they were honest, God-fearing men. Yeah, I, they were not totally. Okay, don't shake your head. Uh, no, hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. Let me finish this, because I don't think we give them, I don't think we give them um, whatever. Personally, yes, it was power, but maybe they were also, in all honesty, on all honest, honestly, trying to save and defend the historic Jewish faith. They were trying to save the temple worship that God had established through David and Solomon that had been around for how long? Like uh, I'm going to say five, 500 to 800 years by now. The people of Israel were a unique, unique people among the people of the earth. People came from all over the world. Even Gentiles converted some of them to Judaism. And now you want to tell me that we're going to give up the temple? And what does this mean? That they're going to worship this guy? This guy from Galilee? He's not even, he's not even uh, a Jewish... Um, uh, yeah, uh, he's not a he's 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 a layman. He's not part of the aristocracy. We we need to save what what God has established. Now think about that. Oh, I think that was part. Of, I think yeah, I think it was their power, but I don't think they were just totally evil men but that they were there to save. The problem was... Go ahead, ask your question. I was going to say, I mean, to back up with what you're talking about, you've got to go back to John when Jesus was raised Lazarus from the dead. Yeah. And then he went and talked about what the chief priests were going to do about this because all the people were not following him. Yeah. And then it says here, if we let him go on like this, everyone will believe We'll go him. after him. We'll, we'll come and take away from yep. place. There you go. Yes. yes. Yeah, okay, but you're, uh, you know, maybe, I, well, I think they had good motives. I think, you know, their minds. Well, they didn't believe no. Jesus was yes. Uh, so right. Yeah. Now, let me, let me just, I know. So, the other problem was, he didn't fit their idea of the Messiah. This cannot be the Messiah. He would never come in and what? be crucified, number one, absolutely. And number two, he would never, never speak against the temple. He would fulfill the temple. He would protect the temple. He, so Jesus must be a, a fraud. And these guys, even though we can't find the body, God knows what happened to the body. Think about their conversation. Who knows what happened to the body? They could have stolen it for all we know, right? They could have. 
So we're not going to let this happen. And the sad part is, they couldn't, they knew their scriptures, right? They could have gone back to the scriptures and learned of the Christ was to suffer and die. And they couldn't and they didn't. And they couldn't come to it. And finally, what happened to them? They got entrenched, hard-hearted, right? No, we're defending this temple. We're saving Judaism. Otherwise, as you said, the Romans will come in and destroy our land. Yeah. Yes, yes, I was going to, yes, they couldn't see God's new plan. Yeah, they couldn't see the new plan. And they probably expected if he was the Messiah, he would, he would establish his rule in Jerusalem and in the temple. Yeah, yeah, and they couldn't see that. And neither could the, let's, let's face it, the disciples didn't see it either. They were, they were blind to it until after Pentecost. And still, it took them a while probably to understand. You know, they're at, at Jesus' ascension, they're still asking what question? Will you at this time restore the kingdom to Jerusalem? In other words, will you, are you going to establish a worldly power for Israel? Yeah, and, 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 well, and rule the world. So, you know, I think there, we, we say, we, we try and answer this simply, but I think it was much more complicated. All right, hang on, let me finish here. Uh, the private conference uh, take, takes on the action to disprove the, yes, and I said, it, all they had to do was go. By the way, verse 19, where, have I read that yet? No, okay, we're at verse 18, let's go back. Ver, verse 18, everybody? Yeah. Let me read. Then they called them in, commanded them not to speak or teach in the name of Jesus. Peter and John replied, judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. Now that's an important statement. For we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. And now this is coming out of the mouth of two guys who didn't understand anything. Even at the resurrection of even at even at the resurrection. They didn't understand anything. Okay? So think about that. So judge for yourselves whether it's right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. This was a big deal for Peter and John, people. Because by, to go disobey the Sanhedrin was to, number one, put your life in danger of death. They could have killed them very easily. Could have killed them as heretics, as a threat to Israel's, and worse, they could have condemned them to hell. And the Sanhedrin had the power. They were God's powerhouse here on earth. Okay? So this was not easy. We gotta read through this. The boys, this was tough. I think they really thought they were gonna die. Well, eventually they did die, didn't they? All right, let's go on. On their release, all right, after, fur after further threats, verse 21, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what had happened. For the man, yeah, all the, yeah, the, for the man who was miraculous, he healed, was over 40 years old. Now they had a, now they had a resurrection, uh, not a resurrection, insurrection, insurrection on their hands. And what the heck are we going to do? Yeah, they'll all go after them. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people, reported all that happened. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. I, you know, I got to believe among the folks, as they pray, they weren't, a lot of them weren't cheering because they knew what was coming. Right? 
I mean, the, you ever have that where the, it hits the fan, you know? And my life is now in danger. When they heard this, they raised their voices in prayer. Sovereign Lord, you made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in it. You spoke by the Spirit through the mouth of David. Why do the nations rage? Notice how they quote passages. The people plot in vain. The kings of the earth take their stand. The rulers gather together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Of course, that's the Mashiach, okay? The Christus. I'm going to do something. Gonna, we're going to finish this up. Remind me to go to the whiteboard here. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles. This is their prayer. Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in, in this city to conspire against your servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will, think about this, had decided beforehand should happen. Now, and that was for the Christ to what? Suffer and die and, and crucify. Think about that. That was the divine plan. You got to admit, nobody in Jesus' day would have thought that. No Jewish leadership would have thought that. You go, okay, so let's understand those people of that day. Now, Lord, consider their threats. Enable your servants to speak your word. <laughs> this is crazy. Give us the to speak in boldness, great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform more miraculous signs and wonders through the name of your servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. I wonder, one of, the, one of my thoughts here is, I wonder how many walked away. I wonder, how many, I wonder if there were any of whatever the number was walked away because of fear. You know? You know, we, when, we, when we go through the Bible, we think of people in sort of glorious terms. We, we, we sainticize them. We, see, we sainticize them. That they, you know, they didn't have any doubt. They had no fear. They had no regrets. I mean, these people were going to lose everything. They were going to be hunted down, many of them killed, rejected by society, never understood because the hatred would continue for years to come. Everybody understand that? All right, uh, let me go through this. They, to speak boldly, that's the amazing thing, isn't it? To speak boldly. What else? with boldness, and let us bring more miracles, okay? All right, and they're filled. So let me just, if you haven't had this happen, since I got a whiteboard, we have a new whiteboard. So I, by the way, I'm teaching confirmation class, and you know what? They love Latin, and now I'm giving them Greek and Hebrew. Because <laughs> they never get it, you know? All right, so the term Christ... You guys probably know this since you're so well informed. But the term Christ, of course, is our uh, English word. It's not as, as, it's, as someone, one kid said, that must, that's Jesus' last name, right? <laughs> no, it's Jesus the Christ. Well, seriously, that's what you would think. Jesus Christ, that's his last name. All right? So... It comes, Christ, how do I want to do this? Comes from the Greek word, Christus. Let me give it to you in Greek, Christus. Okay? That's the Greek word, and the Greek word means Mashiach, or it comes, uh, no, it doesn't mean Mashiach. It means anointed one. Okay? So when you see the term Messiah in our New Testament, uh, or Christ, that comes from the Greek word Christos, which means anointed one. And what does anointed one mean? Who was anointed? No. 
um, well, okay, he's chosen, but set, set apart, set apart for divine service, okay? So the term Christus, Jesus the Christ, we actually should say Jesus the Christ. And of course, we take these first two word, letters, right? Everybody know this? If you're 14, 12 years old, 14, you don't know this. We take the chai, not the x, the chai, and then they took the ro, and they did this, and then they added that for the cross. As the chai ro, that's the chai ro. Were you ever taught that in confirmation class? Did I? I'm still doing it. But the Cairo, yes. And uh, so that's his title, Jesus the Christ. Okay, the Messiah, the Mashiach in Hebrew, but also the anointed one who is set apart for God's service. You want to hear, see the Jesus thing? All right, I'll give you Jesus. So Jesus, and in Hebrew is? No. Jesus? Daryl, thank you. I was letting these, I wanted, I wanted the Michigan people to answer. It is, in the Hebrew, it's Yeshua. Yeah. And what is the, mean, what is the meaning of Yeshua? No. Yeshua. That's close. It means Yahweh, Yahweh saves. Yeah, not God, but Yahweh, which is God's personal name, saves or rescues. Rescue. Okay, the image. And by the way, this is an important image. And I just shared this. Was that in confirmation? Uh, maybe. It, yeah. What's the imagery behind the Lord saves or rescues? Or our Savior or salvation? What's the image? No. That's a good, yeah, that's a picture, but that's not. That is, that is a picture. Someone who rescues me from a life-threatening situation from which I cannot rescue myself. That is a, now think about that. that when, you, when you understand, that's Jesus, that's Je Yeshua, he's my Savior. He rescues me from a life-threatening situation from which I cannot save myself. And that is the picture of the good shepherd reaching over the cliff and pulling the sheep who cannot save himself. And we have pictures of that all along. Now that's a picture, isn't it? All right? So Yeshua, let me give you that. In, this is, in Greek, Jesus. Not Jesus, but Jesus. Okay? And what the early Christian church did, they took the first three letters and they put the, the I-H-S. And that's on the cross. That's on the cross. So that is the abbreviation for the name Jesus. Did you guys know that one? No. Who did not know that? You didn't know that? Didn't, you, didn't your pastor in confirmation back at, didn't he teach you that? In the Methodist church? Did you go through confirmation in the Methodist church? You didn't. Baptist church, okay. You missed that lesson? Where were you? Would you tell us where you were, please? <laughs> in a bar. <laughs> so easy to pick on people. Anybody remember that? Nobody remember that. Uh, Eugene. You remember the Christus and the Jesus from Confirmation? Slightly? All right. Anyway, so again, chapter 4. I mean, what time is it? It's time to quit. But chapter 4, you know, we kind of go over it easily and quickly. But this was real intense for everybody involved. And we kind of miss that. That's why... We need to take a moment. By the way, I want to just share a couple of things. I did this last week. Uh, so we're going through this vision process, and these are the measures. Measures are how are we doing, okay? 
Are we successful? And there's four of them. And I thought, this is totally different than what most of us would think in the church. People can see Jesus in me. That's number one. Can people see Jesus in me? Second, am I freely sharing God moments with others? Now think about that. Am I, do I freely share? Well, that was a God thing. You ever say that? Yeah. And, but we tend to keep that to ourselves. But why don't I share that? Okay? People can see Jesus in me. Boy, that's a, now that's a question. Number three, am I reflecting? This is, a, this is the kicker. Am I reflecting the joy of Jesus in my service? Or am I reflecting my crabby, grumbly <laughs> spirit? No, seriously. Am I reflecting the joy? It's one thing to serve in God's kingdom and be a blessing to others, but am I serving with joy? Or am I just serving to, you know, be a pain in the neck? Or am I serving because, well, you know, Suzanne asked me. She told me I had to serve today. Right? Or the pastor. On the, you remember the, uh, what was the show? Hang on. Andy Griffith show. Andy Griffith got in trouble, and he, he wrote something about the pastor, that he, he, he put him to sleep, and the pastor heard about it. So he calls Andy in, he says, Andy, you know, I'm glad you're here, because I need a Sunday school teacher for the next year. <laughs> and he said, preacher, I'm sorry that I said that about you. He said, I know you are, Andy, and part of your penance is you become the Sunday school teacher. <laughs> Only in the 50s in America would you see that. Yes, the other, okay. Number three, am I, so am I reflecting the joy of Jesus in my service? Number four, am I a loving extension of Jesus to others? Am I a loving extension? Which kind of, can people see Jesus? So I want you to think about those, folks. We would not, we don't think in those terms, do we? Those of us who were raised in the Lutheran church in the Midwest, we weren't, we weren't taught to think about that so much, were we? Girls? Hey, Daryl? Yeah. We'd like you to improve a little bit on that. Let's read that one. Yes? Yeah, I'll make you a copy, sure. Would you? Okay, I'll make you copies. All right, next week. What's next week's lesson? We're number four, I know. What's the next week's lesson? It is, it's got to be chapter 4, verse 32. Oh, we're coming, to An we're coming to Ananias and Sapphira and the apostles and, oh, the apostles persecuted. Yeah. 4, 32, 542. Oh, through the end of chapter 5. Okay, so the end of chapter 4 and 5. Okay, try and read ahead. Is this okay? Would you like more discussion? Okay, all right, let's pray. Your Father in heaven, we come to you this Wednesday morning and we thank you for the testimony of the apostles, the men and women of that early Christian church after, right after the resurrection and ascension of Jesus. Dear Lord, help us to be amazed and wonder and wonder at what they went through at the reality that they faced, that they were real human beings, real flesh and blood people with all the emotions that we have. And help us to learn from them, dear Lord, the power of the gospel and the power and presence of the Holy Spirit in their life. Thank you for this study of the book of Acts. May it rejuvenate in each of us uh, the joy of the resurrection and the joy of Jesus and the willingness to be faithful to you, dear Lord Jesus. Bless our time together and bless us individually. In your name, dear Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.